Cade McNamara is the only man in camp with significant snaps under Harbaugh. McNamara threw for 425 yards and five scores in four games last season. Highly touted recruit J.J. McCarthy enters as one of the country's top freshman QBs, ranked as the 25th overall prospect by 24-7. And Michigan once again has the chance to go the transfer route as it did with Rudock and Patterson. This year, that option is former Texas Tech quarterback Alan Bowman. The man who takes the first snap on opening day will be the fifth different starter in seven years under Jim Harbaugh. And in two of those seasons, that starter lost his job before year's end. According to the Michigan head coach, he already has a starter in mind, and it's the man he knows the most about. Gates a starter, uh, and that's, uh, that's the way we anticipated. I mean, Cade's got these, got these traits of uh, you know, being a very talented but also uh, the competitive traits that he has. I mean, I, I just don't see, I don't see him giving that up. Uh, now, J.J.'s, you know, trying to take it. He's got the, and J.J.'s got the same traits, uh, it, all, in, all in a good way. But, uh, you know, I think that's the best thing, you know, for our team, for, for J.J., for, uh, and, and for the ball club. Starting with Kate, you know, he's had a great summer. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, he really kind of displayed his leadership down the stretch last year. Uh, you know, he was in a tough quarterback battle last year going into preseason camp. Uh, never stopped fighting, kept, kept uh, you know, showing up every day and preparing and had some opportunities along the way. Uh, and what you saw in those games was the team rally around him. Uh, and, it, and that was specifically because of his leadership. You know, the, the type of energy that he approaches each and every day, his mental focus. Uh, you know, those type things are, are what others see in him. You know, obviously he's got an athletic skill set as a quarterback, uh, but the trust that he has in the men around him uh, and the trust that he has and those men have in him uh, what allows him to be successful most fan bases most coaches most programs would be thrilled with a six-year stretch during which its team won 70 percent of its games played in big time bowls and crushed the recruiting trail of course michigan is not your average program that's why the return of jim harbaugh to this point has not reached the lofty expectations set when he was hired in december 2014 now heading into what he hopes is lucky year number seven, Harbaugh sat down with Dave Revson. Very pleased to be joined by Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh. I want to start with this. We're getting you post-workout here. You were just working the sleds with your team. Tell us how you're feeling. Oh, I'm not nervous. I'm just a little winded. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, we're doing a little fourth quarter circuit. And uh, it was good. Everybody, uh, everybody got better. We got better as one today. Uh, I felt that uh, coming out of this practice. How, how often do you jump in there with the guys? Uh, just got just for that fourth quarter workout and a few other things now and again. Uh, this was an impressive practice. It's interesting to see the differences. The staff, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about the different composition of this group. How have you seen the changes kind of manifest themselves on the field? I see a lot of guys coaching a lot of guys in a good way. Um, Teams had a lot of energy. Coaches have had a lot of energy, and uh, you know, just day by day, brick by brick, you know, uh, that's that's how we're going about this. New defensive coordinator Mike McDonald. No secret, the defense wasn't where you needed it to be last year. Where have you seen the biggest improvement? Uh, well, I mean, it starts with Aiden Hutchinson returning for uh, fourth year. You know what uh, what his legacy is going to be like here at uh, at Michigan. Same with Josh Ross. Uh, you know, those two. Those two leaders on defense, along with Brad Hawkins, who also returned. Uh, guys that have experienced uh, playtime guys coming back, uh, you know, for their final year. It's, uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of where it starts. They're leading by example. Coach, how do you define success for this program this year? Is it winning the Big Ten? Is it beating, winning your rivalry game? What, what's a successful year? You know, it, it's, uh, it's getting better every day. I mean, that's what I want right now is for this team to get better every single day uh, as one. Uh, felt like we came out of that today. Now we'll go watch the tape, uh, see if we can't make the meetings tonight, the best meetings that we've had so far in this camp, and then uh, come back tomorrow, put the, put the pads back on, and uh, try to get a mile an hour faster tomorrow. Okay, let me rephrase that then. Yeah, no, it's, At I mean, the it's, end of the year, how yeah, would you define well, success? I mean, it's, it's the simple formula of improvement will lead to success. That's the theory. And uh, that'll lead to championships. That'll lead to uh, all, uh, all the goals that, that we want to have at the end of the year. To what extent do you feel pressure for this to be a really good year? Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, I got kind of feet on it, as a matter of fact. It's not, it's not my first time uh, you know, being in a, 
being in a pressure situation, I'm, uh, look at that uh, as, as a daily basis. He really, it's life-giving energy to me. I mean, uh, I kind of I kind of thrive in that that environment. Uh, well, it was great to watch it here today. Thanks a lot for having us, Michigan right. coach Jim Harbaugh. Thanks. Now, the 2020 season wasn't truly a fair measuring stick, but still, the Wolverines finished 2-4 and four despite having eight players selected in this year's NFL draft. Only Georgia, Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Alabama had more players taken this spring, and those teams were a combined 33-5. and five. Dave Revson anchors our training camp coverage from Ann Arbor. Jerry got a chance to see the maize and blue go through their paces coming off what was a very disappointing year. Obviously, the pandemic had a lot to do with it, but just two two wins for Michigan a year ago. Big picture impressions for what we saw. Really long practice. I mean, probably the longest practice that we've seen, but no pads. Uh, talent, I think probably the most talented team we have seen to this point. But without pads, hard to get a real good feel. In other words, the quarterback's never really has pressure in his face. How do you evaluate a running back? How do you evaluate offensive and defensive line? Having said that, though, I think the schedule is perfect for the for the talent, let, let me explain that. Western Michigan, obviously they have more talent. Washington, you know, should be a great non-conference game, but regardless of the outcome, then Northern Illinois, Rutgers, and Wisconsin. So you take a team that has this much talent, if they are physical, if they do come together, I love the schedule. And then your toughest games, other than that Wisconsin game and the Washington game you mentioned, come down the stretch, right? I mean, you think about the month of November, you've got Indiana, Penn State, and. Remind me who they finished with. <laughs> oh, so Ohio State, saying. yes, that's right. Uh, so no <laughs> doubt, right, you have a chance to build and, and finish the year strong in games that are incredibly significant to the team and to the fan base. What about the quarterback spot? And one of the criticisms, I think it's fair to say, of Jim Harbaugh here is that he hasn't really developed a homegrown quarterback. What do you think of the group? Felt like Cade McNamara and then J.J. McCarthy from what we saw today. Yeah, there's no doubt that, that that's the order based on today's practice. And I don't really think it'll change. I think Cade's the most prepared and very talented. J.J. may have the most talent. It, it, it's hard really to tell again without pads. And, and Bowman, the transfer from Texas Tech, doesn't really look like he's, he's in the picture. But those first two guys, uh, uh, J.J.'s got a lot of talent, but he's young. And how do you evaluate a young quarterback without a contact practice? So that makes me hesitant. But it looks like Cage is starting quarterback yeah. based on today. Interesting to see Bowman kind of not really a factor, a guy who threw for more than 5,000 yards during his time at Texas Tech. Hard to believe Michigan gave up the second most points per game in school history a year ago. Though, again, to be fair, 2020 offered a much smaller sample size than other seasons. Still a dramatic improvement on that side of the ball, and 2021 is a must. With more takeaways on Michigan's Friday training camp practice, here once again are Joshua Perry and Howard Griffith. Just finishing up at Michigan's practice. They did not wear pads today, but we still got to see some pretty good work in the individual periods, and they had a really hefty team period there at the end. What were some of the things that stood out to you? For me, looking at this offensive line, you're returning quite a few starters, veteran group. I think this is going to be an area of the team that they're really going to hang their hat on to be able to run the football, control the line of scrimmage. That gives them a great opportunity with the quarterbacks to then go vertically down the field with whether it's play action or RPOs. Yeah, and we saw a lot of that play action game being tossed in there today, which is really good. And that is started up front. And the running backs did their part as well. We saw how they were used in the pass game, also in the run game. As I look, the defensive line stands out to me. And again, kind of hard to evaluate a defensive line when they're not in pads. But they have some really good looking physiques up there. Just the body type of the guys that are out on the field, especially in the interior. And they move around extremely well. But also that outside side linebacker position that's kind of new in this 3-4 defense yeah. it's getting me excited and they got Aiden Hutchinson playing out there and he really flashed a lot of times obviously one of the best players <laughs> no in doubt. the conference of uh, not all of college football but definitely stood out and then you take a step back to that next level the inside linebackers we watched their drill work for a while they're a well-coached group yeah, really well-coached group I, I, and I think this entire team is well coached. I really like the, the vibe of the team. There's a lot of teaching going on. But if we go look at the defensive side, you look out in the secondary, Daxon Hill. He's been outstanding since he's been here. I think he could be really setting up for a great year in this type of system. Yeah, definitely turning from one of the defenses last year that struggled now to a defense that we both think will have a pretty good year. Pleased to be joined by one of Michigan's outstanding leaders, Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Looking at practice today, you had a long team period at the end, and then you went into that little fourth quarter conditioning period. Uh, just kind of describe what was going on out there. Yeah, that's just uh, you know our, our head coach and our strength coach is getting creative with it. 
Um, you know, we had a lighter practice today, helmets only. Guys are out there running around, and you know, we went out there. We got the big skill, uh, O line, D line, all those guys rolling after practice. Hit a little circuit. Um, you know, it's just it's really good uh, awareness of our head coach and our strength coaches to try to get us more uh, conditioning and and just uh, you know work us a little harder on these lighter days. And when you take the pads off, how does the emphasis for your team shift? I know it becomes a little bit more of a mental day. Uh, how do you compartmentalize that as a leader? Yeah, it's uh, it's a little weird, you know, going from full pads, smash mouth football. And the next day, you're you know you're just putting hands on and stuff like that. So it's something that we got to get better at. Um, you know, at the, at the end of practice, we started to get it a little better, but um, really the emphasis is just running around, going out there, making plays, light contact. So that's pretty much the emphasis. And you're installing a new defense right now. Uh, I was watching your defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, out there, and it seems like he's really a, a teacher as a coach, he's kind of walking you through it and really giving you the pointers. Um, how has his influence changed the defense so far? Yeah, all the guys are bought into him and all the guys are bought in, uh, you know, to the defense that he's instilled in us and um, kind of the values and the principles that he's brought onto this football team. Um, you, you know, he's, he was out there teaching us, um, you know, outside backers, you know, different techniques, stuff like that. So really getting that hands-on work with the, with the head man, I mean, that's, that's always good to get. So, um, yeah, he's been a great teacher for us this offseason and, and uh, you know, the, these couple days into camp. And for you, now your role kind of changes up a little bit within that defense. You're standing up. Uh, you've got some different responsibilities. How do you think that suits you as a player? I think it brings out the best of me. You know, I can play a lot of places on that defensive line. And, um, you know, I think Coach McDonald knows my, my abilities and he knows where to utilize me. And I think he's going to put me in the best position for me to succeed this season. I think that versatility is going to be dangerous. I'll get you out of here on this question. Uh, you look at yourself, obviously, you're one of the leaders on this team. I was watching some of the guys run around. You got a guy like Josh Ross in that linebacker room who I think is a very good leader. What has the conversation been like in the meeting room in terms of that, the defense taking the next step for this year? Yeah, Jay Ross has been has been huge in taking that next step. You know, it's kind of me, him, and Brad on the defense who are the vocal leaders, and you know, try to get the guys straight in, in all the different rooms. So um, I think we, we've been doing a good job. We still got to keep building. Um, you know, keep building the younger guys, keeping the energy up in practice, and I think we'll be all right. Aiden, I appreciate your time today. Man, thanks for having me. Pleased to be joined by sophomore receiver AJ Henning. How's it been in the second year in the system for you? You know, the second year uh, it's been a transition. You know, uh, the first year coming in as a freshman, you know, I was just kind of learning the system, kind of ease my way in there, kind of find my role any way I can. You know, this year I'm more comfortable in the system, more comfortable with the plays and just ready to get in there, in there and make my impact anyway. Looks like you guys got two quarterbacks that are more than capable of leading. You could talk a little bit about those two guys. You know, Cade and JJ, they, you know, set the bar really high. You know, both those guys are competitors. Both those guys are leaders. Uh, and they had a really strong uh, camp so far. A lot of guys in that wide receiver room that you're a part of. Talk about them. No doubt. Uh, you know, the wide receiver room, we're just a tight-knit group. Uh, we're a really tight, tight knit group. Uh, you know, you got the older guys like Brian, who's been here for a while. He kind of showed, showed the younger guys the ropes. You got CJ and Mikey, who have both had experience. And, you know, you got the young guys coming along, me, Roman, and then some of the true freshmen that have just came in here. You know, we're, we're like I said, we're a tight knit group, a lot of uh, speed, a lot of playmaking ability, and we're ready to make it happen. What are some of the keys for this offense to be successful this year? I feel like just, just coming together every day in practice, just working to that common goal, you know, just. Uh, working hard every day to, to, to reach, our, reach our heights. You got an interesting perspective being a wide receiver, new defensive coordinator, new scheme on that side. Talk about some of the challenges that you guys have had going against them. Yeah, no doubt. The defense has been giving it to us every day. They're raising the bar every day for us to keep, keep building as an offense. And uh, you know those guys on, on the defensive side are giving us good looks though, so that we can get better every day. AJ, well, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Stay healthy. Thank you for having me. We're visiting with Coach Josh Gaddis, offensive coordinator at Michigan. Coach, you're in the middle of a quarterback battle. What are some of the traits that maybe separates the starter from the rest of them? You know, the one thing that really stands out about what you want in your quarterback is the leadership. You know, first and foremost, that's the person that, you know, that rallies the team, that makes everyone around them better, gets you all on the same page. Uh, and the person that the team really believes in, that's going to help, you know, drive success of the overall team, not just the offense. And so, uh, you know, it's been great just this camp to see all the quarterbacks stepping up, uh, challenging themselves to take on leadership roles on this team. And, and that goes deeper than just on the field. It goes through the locker room uh, and doing everything that we can possibly do right. Uh, that way we can develop those habits on the field. 
apply the, the leadership principle to some of your guys? Who, who's, what kind of leaders are they? And give us some specifics about the quarterbacks. You know, Cade, starting with Cade, you know, he's had a great summer. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, he really kind of displayed his leadership down the stretch last year. Uh, you know, he was in a tough quarterback battle last year going into preseason camp. Uh, never stopped fighting, kept, kept uh, you know, showing up every day and preparing and had some opportunities along the way. Uh, and what you saw in those games was the team rally around him. Uh, and, and that was specifically because of his leadership. You know, the, the type of energy that he approaches each and every day, his mental focus. Uh, you know, those type things are, are what others see in him. You know, obviously he's got an athletic skill set as a quarterback, uh, but the trust that he has in the men around him uh, and the trust that he has and those men have in him, uh, what allows him to be successful. And then you've seen J.J., a young kid, come right. on, uh, where he's a true freshman. But, you know, J.J. is a natural-born leader. You know, he's been in a leadership role uh, his whole life. And, uh, you know, when you go back and look at his high school career, he's won on every level and he's won big. Uh, and that's what stands out about him is, you know, his drive, his demeanor, uh, his approach. Although he's a freshman, uh, he carries himself as a savvy veteran. Uh, and the players obviously see how talented he is physically. Uh, they see he can run, he can throw, he's smart. Uh, and he's, keep, he's pushing that quarterback room and raising the bar. Uh, and then having a guy like Alan Bowman. Uh, come in, who's played, he's started a ton of games early on in his career at Texas Tech. Uh, he's got that uh, old man savviness to him kind of right. in that room, you know, where, you know, he's been around the block once or twice and, uh, you know, he knows how to approach it. He knows how to uh, develop relationships. Uh, and so we're excited. You know, we're excited. Obviously, we got a long way to go right now. Um, it's still early. Uh, first game isn't for a couple weeks. And so we got to continue bringing that room along, uh, that quarterback room along to bring the team along. You've had some new coaches join the offense, but you also have shuffled some some coaches that were with you previously to different positions. How do you get your offensive staff on the same page for the first time before you play Western Michigan? Absolutely, it's about shared goals. You know, um, we've got a, uh, you know we've got a room of, of great men. I'm excited to work with each and every one of them. I think we have a room full of great coaches and great teachers. Um, having some of the new additions and you know Mike Hart coming here and obviously moving Coach Moore to offensive line and Coach Jay to tight ends and then Coach Weiss. I really love what our quarter, what our uh, what our offensive room is at. Um, but now we've got to share those collective thoughts and we've got to build our identity together. Uh, it's not about what we've all done in the past. It's about what we can do best for our team now and the players we have on this roster. And so, you know, chemistry has been a big part this offseason, not only in our, as our coaching staff, but if we can display that chemistry as a coaching staff, that trust, that buy-in, that love for each other, that'll rub off on our players. You and I talked about the improved offensive line, deep offensive line, talented offensive line. Why are they better? I think just the drive that Coach Moore has, 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 you know, has displayed with those guys, the chemistry in that room. Uh, you see that room, you know, they're having fun, they're laughing before meetings. Uh, they're playing together and they're playing for each other and they're playing for their coach and Coach Moore. And so he's done a tremendous job uh, just embracing the role. Obviously, it was a new position for him coming in, but it's not a new position because he was a former offensive lineman. And so, uh, you know, he, know, he knows all the tricks of the trade. Uh, he's done a great job, you know, studying our offense, knowing our offense and just pushing these guys. And then also when you look at our offensive line room, uh, we've got about seven or eight guys that have started. Right. You know, unfortunately, last year we went through a ton of injuries. Uh, we had about three or four different rotations. And so when we look at that room and see the depth and see eight guys that are returning that have started in football games, uh, and three of those guys played last year as freshmen, uh, it, it builds for an exciting future. Uh, but we've got to figure out the right five. So that's the challenge. Appreciate your time, especially this time of year. Have a great year. Thank you, guys.